Hey everybody, what up? All right, so this is like a programmer tip, something um, that I've learned over 20 years of doing this. And uh, I gotta say, you know, other times, uh, there, there's, there's times where it's like not as problematic, and then there's times where I think it is more problematic. And usually it depends on what I have on my plate and how complicated that task is and how familiar I am with it. So if I've had any experience with doing it before, this doesn't really come into play as often. But if you're taking on a lot and you're doing a lot of learning, um, th this can be detrimental, especially if you're dealing with something uh, difficult. And what I'm talking about is context switching. And it's not context switching in the sense of computer programming, but it's actually more about multitasking and uh, dealing with things as, as a, a normal human with a typical human fallible brain. Uh, but a context switch you can see from actual Wikipedia article here is like, in computing a context which is the process of storing a, the state of a process or thread so that it can be restored and resume execution at a later point and then restoring a different previously saved state. So again, you're doing something, you pause, you come back to it, you can pick up where you left off. That's a context switch. But in reality, when you're dealing with context switching and programming or any tasks that involves like human thought, logical comprehension, uh, focus and attention it's not you're not a robot you're not a computer you're not you don't have like state memory and in, in a uh, you know magnetic hard drive or something that you can just simply pick up right where you left off so you can think of it like you know doing a complicated task like filing your taxes or uh, anything to do with programming for that matter but you you stop something sometimes you can find yourself taking hours to pick up where you left off and a good example of that is actually a virtual reality video game that I was working on. Uh, I sunk quite a bit of time into it last year, and I was getting really close, and I still want to release it this year at some point if I can. But one of the things that happened was my schedule got busier towards the end of the year, and then I started context switching away from it. So every time I would come back, it was an extremely complicated process, uh, a project that involved a lot of things I wasn't familiar with, which is typically what you're going to be asked to do in the programming field. And even if it was something that I had learned along the way and became pretty comfortable and familiar with, the context switching of, of having to go like a month without revisiting that project was a killer. And it, it's continued to be a killer. And it's like that throughout my programming career as well, where you don't just jump right back into the project and pick up right where you left off. So I think a lot of us can relate to that burning the midnight oil. That's why we, especially as newer developers and even probably experienced, like you can work late into the evenings. Um, you get your motivation and spurts, right? And you can just really put a lot of time, you know, work through that. Like I said, burn the midnight oil, work through the evenings, um, put in 75, 80 hours in a week. You can't do that forever. But I think a lot of times we do that because it's like, hey, the motivation and you know the the mindset is there right now if i context switch and i start working on my taxes or a personal issue or completing another project or worst case you know i'm doing that throughout the day which a lot of us find ourselves doing in this field it's impossible uh, or maybe not impossible but just a real pain in the ass to have to context switch between one task and another um, here's an article from asana and they're saying context switching is killing your productivity. So there's a lot of articles out there that, that talk about this. Um, I'm just really speaking from my own personal experience, but uh, maybe I'll link to some of these in uh, the description below. In fact, I will. Um, what you can just see is when you hop between different tasks, apps, or projects, it's normal. We're all doing it. But when we spend too much time or so much time jumping between social media, communication apps, and project management software, that there's not much productive time and space left for deep work. So deep work is anything that's going to be complicated, something you're not familiar with. Um, yeah, so um, yeah. So th this distraction tax hurts productivity, increases overwhelm, making us simultaneously more stressed and less productive. And I would agree with that. So you do that enough, um, you know, ultimately you're just not getting familiar enough with the projects you're working on. So everything is uncomfortable. And when everything is uncomfortable, that's either leading towards like a lot of increased stress or more hours at the office. And either way, like both of those will probably lead to burnout. Uh, and if you haven't watched some of my videos on burnout, like I, I've been burnout before and I try to avoid that now, like, but 
Uh, I would say even like YouTube, I, I burned out from that and I, I've stepped away for quite some time and I kind of want to get back into it. So I'll see how this goes and I don't really care what views and, and all that are, are um, going to come my way. I don't rely on this, thank God, but uh, I do like doing it and I'd like to get my channel back on track. So that's uh, sort of my goal and I'm changing my schedule in the way that I do it. So I took about a year and a half off and then now my schedule is going to be different. So it's going to be morning and that's actually when I want to do the videos. I used to do them at night. Um, and now I have to do it first thing in the morning if I'm going to do it at all. So I find that my schedule uh, matters a lot. And, and a lot of that is the context switching throughout the day, right? There's a lot of tasks where by the time you're done with the day, like I am burned, man. I am. Um, I'm done. Like I, I don't want to look at a computer screen. I don't want to read about code. I'm done. Um, and especially because like I'm a single father, I got two kids and one's in college. Another one's getting ready for college. Like I got a dog who's 14 years old that's still... Uh, alive and got a lot of uh, health issues you got relationship issues you got finances and taxes and all this stuff man and like you know it's not all about code 24 hours a day right um the older you get the more you realize that and the more you realize like uh you know time is something that is gold man that is the true gold not money and um all that said i'll i'll just uh that's context switching i'm context switching between one you know topic of the video to another right and it's like no don't, don't do that stay on task stay on stay on uh, focus um but yeah man um that that should lead you to burnout and if uh, you're interested in some of my burnout videos i'll, I'll link to those uh, as well um so you know it just says uh context switching multitasking is another article from synapse studios the studios this these are all just different names for the same productivity killer. And it's computing origin. Context switching refers to storing the context around a process or a thread. And we've already went over that. So basically juggling all these different things is just not healthy for you. Uh, you got to find time, I feel like, to actually set boundaries in your, your work schedule. And whether that means blocking off time on Slack or Teams uh, or, you know, setting, the, obviously, your calendar to, to be out to, to focus on tasks. I find myself having to do that these days more than ever um, because otherwise like you can just continue to get IMs like all day long uh, and when things aren't urgent sometimes you, you just don't need that you need you need to be able to do some deep learning deep thought um, so that's something that I think depending on where you're at and the culture of the company that you're working for the pro the co-workers around you whether or not that's um, something feasible or not if it's not feasible at all that typically means people have to work in the evenings and, and, uh, and that's just not good. So I would say try to find ways to set boundaries so that you are able to spend the, the appropriate amount of time on the task at hand to, so that you're not spending your wills and wasting your time. And then just to sum this up, like here's the Django code base. And if you're like working on something like this, which a lot of projects in the corporate world are like, you know, this complicated or much more. Um, you know, you're trying to figure out how to run this thing and maybe you're making a, uh, a change and you finally got your local database system working or whatever it might be like a lot of different setup that's involved in any one of these projects, like whether it's Docker, or just installing the right software, virtual environments, God forbid, virtual machines or anything like that. Um, anyway, uh, if you're trying to learn this, like you got to spend the appropriate amount of time being able to do this. You can't start looking into this and then jump into, you know, reading hacker news or, or worse, like you're in another meeting about another project where you're asking, you're being asked specific questions about that code or design or to give your, your true, um, your true thought, uh, is, is difficult, right? So you're going to have to focus on that task and then you stop focusing on this one and then you got to come back to this one. You got to figure out, well, where did I leave off? And most of the time, it's not just simply like, oh, yeah, I left off on that. I find myself sometimes where it spends, I have to spend hours getting back into the frame of mind um, of where I was when I left that task last. And uh, if I would have just been able to block off a little bit more time, I could have uh, saved myself a lot of time in, in, the, in the end. And certainly a lot of stress and, like I said, frustration and prevention of burnout in the future. So, Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, please uh, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it. And uh, everybody take care. Have a good day and talk to you later. If you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. My courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Plural Site and Udemy.
One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. I've risen through the ranks from junior level developer all the way to director of engineering. And in addition to that, I'm also a YouTuber. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. My website has been around for several years. My company has been around for over a decade. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. There's currently over 40 courses on CodeHawk and I'm releasing more courses all the time. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.